Hello and welcome back to the M Vault with me, Marino Palladino. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing to the channel, hitting notifications, and smashing that like button. That'd be great. Now, in today's video, we're going to be talking about a couple of ways that you can save money during this lockdown. Now, hopefully, we'll be out of this lockdown within the next couple of months and the economy will start to reopen. But until then, you know, I thought, let me do a video on a couple of ways that we can continue to start saving money. So this is continuing as well, even after lockdown, but specifically for now, it might help you to, you know, get these in action. 2020 has been one of the most challenging years in modern history since the Second World War and it has really rocked us in so many ter in so many ways however what have we done during this period well we've hopefully been able to save some money because our normal way of life um, have been disrupted and so what you normally would be doing unfortunately had to be put on a closure and the lockdown made that happen and so, you know, we weren't able to go to our favorite restaurants or take that holiday or do many things that we would normally maybe be spending our money. But I think that we actually have still been spending money and it's thanks to the technology that we've also got available to us. And that technology has enabled us to still be able to purchase items over the internet. And for example, you've got your food industry, like your takeaways, your restaurants, which have still been able to deliver thanks to the delivery apps. It's the same also with the e-commerce and, you know, a lot of our department stores and single stores and high street stores have been able to use their website in order to allow us to order products that we would normally maybe go shop for. And we can now get them delivered. It isn't the same though, I must say, it isn't the same as going out there in the physical world and we do hope that that returns. Some industries though, for example, like the hospitality industry and the travel industry, and you know, also the restaurant, if you want to call it, count them in as well, have been hugely affected. And so, you know, we've got pros and cons to this. But today I'm just gonna go through a couple of ways that, you know, you can maybe implement and start to just think about doing that might help you during this lockdown that we're in at the moment. But you can also continue this um, saving money after the lockdown because we still have the the problem of you know how safe are our, how safe are our jobs. Me personally, I'm on the furlough scheme, so that means I'm currently getting 80% of my regular wages. And so that already means that we've lost 20% uh, of, of our regular pay. Now, if you go in, you, you do get paid every time you do go in. So there is a little bit more money that you might get there. But now's a real time to really look at our money and think, right, if I am actually getting, you know, a 20% cut on my pay, I really now need to start, start thinking about what am I going to do with the money I do have? How am I going to utilize it so that in the future I'm in a position where I'm not leaving myself short financially? Now, one of the things that you can do is drive less. Now, it sounds simple, you know, you drive less. That means, you know, when you don't need the car, you don't need the car. Okay. And we have saved money doing this. However, though, to bring it that step forward or step further, should we say, the best way is to plan a route that you're going to be doing on a weekly basis. So for example, if you're um, planning a route to the supermarket, you're going to go to the supermarket, but you're also going to top up your petrol and you're also going to pump up your tires. And therefore, by doing those little things and consolidating all lots of trips that you might otherwise have done, you know, singly, you can actually, you know, save driving around unnecessarily. And that's what the aim of this is, is to basically drive less and consolidate 
any journeys into one big journey once or twice a week. So for example, if you've got a shop that's near you and you know it's within walking distance and you need to go and get a few things, then you know walk into the shop there instead of using your car is a no-brainer because you're going to, you don't need it if it's only going to be a couple of minute trip with the car. And that's a great, great way of saving money. The second thing you can do to help save money is to avoid temptation. This is the hard one. And as a Christian now, we're in the season of Lent. It's like, you know, giving up something and it's hard because you've, you've got to be You've got to be quite strong in, in, in yourself to not be tempted to buy something that you don't need. And, you know, that temptation follows an online and an offline because you could be tempted when you're in a supermarket to, you know, buy things that, you know, you don't need. And the worst thing you can do is go shopping at the supermarket on an empty stomach because then the impulse buying comes in. And so it's trying to limit or bring down that temptation of, you know, do I, you know, should I not buy this or should I buy it? It's, it's, it's that question that comes into our minds and we're all guilty of it at some point. But that is a big one. And in life in general, you know, if you can practice it and it hopefully can get a little bit better. It also goes online though, because when you're browsing online, it's easy to just put things into the cart and then press that pay button and then you've just bought stuff. Do you need it? That's the question. I mean, the question is, do you need it? And when you're, when you're trying to save money, it's always gonna be like, you know, uh, you know, okay, maybe, maybe I'll limit myself instead of buying something I normally buy, you know, four times a month, you might buy it, you know, maybe once or twice a month. And so it's just getting into the habit of just thinking, you know, saving a few things here, saving a few pounds here can actually help in the long run. The third thing you can do is make use of your cashback websites or apps and offers that companies can offer you. So for example, you know, Sainsbury's has got, has got the Nectar card and you can use that Nectar card to collect points every time you shop. And so that then in turn gives you enough points that then you can use to offset on a future purchase. And you can use, you know, cashback websites as well for a very uh, varied amount of, you know, service products and services. For example, I use topcashback.co.uk and that allows you to basically search offers that are going on with your favorite brands and they might have a cashback if you buy via that link. So I find it a very good way of, of um, you know, capitalizing on, you know, saving some money. There's also great apps out there that you can use as well, which do a similar job. And now even the banks have also got involved in this. So, you know, credit cards, all that sort of stuff where you can get cash back on purchases. So it's an array of like, you know, um, information that you have to absorb in order to find, you know, what deals are great. And there's a lot of, a lot of them out there, but it's something that you can use. And I think that this you can use ongoing because, you know, you can get now cash back on, um, you know, insurances and, uh, you know, all those sort of other financial services and products. So definitely make use of those and not only now, but make use of these going forward as well. Now the fourth thing you can do is use comparison websites. Now I've personally used these for my car insurance and I've found them very useful in, you know, getting a, the right price and the best price that is available to you on the market. So comparison sites are really, really good. And I use Money Supermarket, but you, you know, there's loads of them out there. There's Compare the Market, there's Confused as well, .com, there's, um, yeah, there's, 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 there's lots out there that you can use and, you know, you can actually use them also with your cashback um, website as well if you know how to use it. So definitely make sure you're using the price comparison sites to compare your car insurance if, if it's up for renewal, but you can also use it to compare, you know, your energy, your gas, your electric, your phone bill, your broadband, there's, there's everything in there that you can use. There's also other services like, you know, U-Switch, 
there's there's loads out there there's apps i'm sure there's loads of things that we can go into but um just just as a general thumb thumbs rule use use them to your advantage and especially if you're coming up for a renewal on your car insurance or your um or your home insurance it really does pay to you know just to analyze everything and the fifth thing you can do is limit use of your appliances what do i mean by this well anything that has a resistance in it sucks a lot of energy it uses a lot of electricity so for example kettles irons washing machines tumble dryers hair dryers all that sort of stuff they use a lot of power now you know am i saying to you guys don't use it no by all means not we need to have a balance here and this is really it just comes into for example you know if you're boiling a full kettle of water it's going to take a lot longer to boil a full kettle and use a lot more energy than if you were to you know say well you know maybe it's only me having a cup of tea then you might want to put just a couple of cups of water in there just for yourself and boil that the other thing is your washing machine you know instead of maybe putting it on you know, maybe three or four times in a week then you might want to consolidate and just put it on maybe two times again saves a lot of energy in terms of electric use and water as well and then you can also use some of these uh, appliances in the evening so for example the ironing you know if you use it at a certain time you can get the cheaper tariff on your energy so it's all to do with just you know not completely limiting it but just to reduce and you know just being smart with all this really that's 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 what it's about well i hope that those ways that you can save some money you know have given you some value and that you can take away and implement now obviously it's one of those things that you know you have to look at on an individual case and see where you're at but if you can start putting something in place to use that can help you this can be also then a way to get yourself in a routine and a mindset of saving money in the long term. So even when the pandemic's over, we can be looking at saving money because, you know, even when this is all over, there's all this has got to be paid back. So are we going to be looking at, you know, increases in taxes and, you know, bills going up again? You know, there's so many things here that we don't know that we're going to be facing. And so we need to you know, start to think um, ahead of the game, shall we say. With that said, if it's your first time stopping here, please consider subscribing to the channel, turn on notifications on, and if you did like this video, smash that thumbs up button. That'd be great. Well, until the next video, stay well, stay safe, and God bless.